obviously, we want to be wealthy and we want to get there in this lifetime without having to rely on luck. A lot of people think making money is about luck. It's not. It's about becoming the kind of person that makes money. You know, I like to think that if I lost all my money and if you drop me on a random street in any English speaking country, within five to 10 years, I'd be wealthy again, <laughs> right? Because it's just a skill set that I've developed and I think anyone can develop. You know, in a thousand parallel universes, you want to be wealthy in 999 of them. You don't want to be wealthy in the 50 of them where you got lucky. So we want to factor luck out of it. There's really four kinds of luck that we were talking about. This came from a book, P. Mark, uh, Mark Andreessen wrote a blog post about it. But basically, there's different kinds of luck. The first kind of luck you might just say is like blind luck, where I just got lucky because something completely out of my control happened. You know, that's fortune, that's fate, etc. Then there's luck that kind of comes through persistence, hard work, hustle, motion, which is when you're just running around creating lots of opportunities, you're generating a lot of energy, you're doing a lot of things, lots of things will just get stirred up in the dust. It's almost like mixing a, a Petri dish and seeing what combines or, or mixing a bunch of reagents and seeing what combines. You're just generating enough force and hustle and energy that luck will sort of find you. We as a group you could argue got together because of that. You know, Nenad had put up these great videos online. I saw them on Twitter. And so in that sense, he sort of generated his own luck by just creating videos until people like me keep finding him. A third way is that you just become very good at spotting luck. So if you are very skilled in a field, you will notice when a lucky break happens in that field when other people who aren't attuned to it won't notice. So you become sensitive to luck and that's through skill and knowledge and work. And then the last kind of luck is the weirdest, hardest kind, but that's what we want to talk about, which is where you build a unique character, a unique brand, a unique mindset, where then luck finds you. For example, let's say that you're the best person in the world at deep sea underwater diving, and you're known to like take on deep sea underwater dives that nobody else will even attempt to dare. And then by sheer luck, somebody finds a sunken treasure ship off the coast they can't get at, well, their luck just became your luck because they're going to come to you to get that treasure and you're going to get paid for it. Now, that's an extreme example, but it's just showing how like the person who got lucky by finding the treasure chest, that was blind luck. But them coming to you and asking you to extract it and having to give you half, that's not luck. You kind of created your own luck. You put yourself in a position to be able to capitalize on that luck or to attract that luck when nobody else has created that opportunity for themselves. So when we talk about without getting lucky, we want to be deterministic. We don't want to leave it to chance. I think it's pretty interesting that the first three kinds of luck that you described, there are very common cliches for them that everybody knows. And then for that last kind of luck that comes to you out of the unique way that you act, there's no real cliche for it. So for the first three kinds, there's dumb luck or blind luck. That's the first kind of luck. The second kind of luck, there's the cliche that fortune favors the bold. That's a person who gets lucky just by stirring the pot and acting. The third kind of luck, people say that chance favors the prepared mind. But for the fourth kind of luck, there is not really a common cliche out there that matches the unique character of your action, which I think is interesting and perhaps an opportunity. And it also just shows that people aren't necessarily taking advantage of that kind of luck the way they should be. I think also at that point, it starts becoming so deterministic that it stops being luck. So the definition starts fading from luck to more destiny. So I would characterize that fourth one is you build your character in a certain way, and then your character becomes your destiny. One of the things I think that is important to making money, you want the kind of reputation that makes people do deals through you. You know, I use the example of like, if you're a great diver, then treasure hunters will come and give you a piece of the treasure for your diving skills. If you're a trusted, reliable, high integrity, long-term thinking deal maker, then when other people want to do deals, but they don't know how to do them in a trustworthy manner with strangers, they will literally approach you and give you a cut of the deal or offer you a unique deal just because of the integrity and reputation that you've built up. Warren Buffett, he gets offered deals and he gets to buy companies and he gets to buy warrants and bail out banks and do things that other people can't do because of his reputation. But of course, that's fragile. It has accountability on the line. It has a strong brand on the line. And as we will talk about later, that comes with accountability attached. 
But I would say your character, your reputation, these are things that you can build that then will let you take out advantages of opportunities that other people may characterize as lucky, but you know that it wasn't luck. You said that this fourth kind of luck is more or less a destiny. There's a quote from that original book that was in uh, Mark's blog post from Benjamin Disraeli, who I think was the former prime minister of the UK. The quote to describe this kind of luck was, we make our fortunes and we call them fate. There were a couple other interesting things about this kind of luck that were mentioned in the blog post. I think it'll be good for the listeners to hear about is that this fourth kind of luck can almost come out of eccentric ways that you do your things and that eccentricity is not necessarily a bad thing in this case. In fact, it's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely, because the world is a very efficient place. So everyone has dug through all the obvious places to dig. And so to find something that's new and novel and uncovered, it helps to be operating on a frontier where right there you have to be a little eccentric to be out on the frontier by yourself. And then you just have to be willing to dig deeper than other people do deeper than seems irrational just because you're interested. Yeah, the two quotes that I've seen that express this kind of luck in addition to that Benjamin Disraeli one are this one from Sam Altman where he said, extreme people get extreme results. I think that's pretty nice. And then there's this other one from Jeffrey Pfeffer, who's a professor at Stanford, that you can't be normal and expect abnormal returns. I've always enjoyed that one too. Yeah. And one quote that I like, which is the exact opposite of that, is play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Right? A lot of people spend a lot of their time playing social games, like on Twitter, where you're just trying to improve your social standing, and you basically win stupid social prizes, which are worthless. I guess the last thing that I have from this blog post is just the idea that by pursuing these kinds of luck, especially the last one, basically everything but dumb luck, by pursuing them, you essentially run out of unlock. So if you just keep stirring the pot and stirring the pot, that alone, you will run out of unlock. Yeah, or it could just be a reversion to the mean, right? So then you at least neutralize luck so that it's your own talents that come into play. Now I want to make some reflections about this kind of luck that comes from one's own unique character. Personally, I follow a particular framework to develop this unique skill set. I first learned about this framework from Tim Ferriss and it consists in the following. When you're thinking about starting any project, think about what skills could you develop or improve by doing the project. If you can identify one or more important skills, then you should be more willing to take the project. Because even if you end up not succeeding, you still will have developed skills that can be useful to you in future projects. Let's hear it from Tim Ferriss himself. But here's the rationale. The rationale was, or rather the question that I would ask myself is like, is there a way that I can win doing this even if I fail? And the way that I win doing something even if I fail is if I develop skills and relationships or deepen relationships that transcend that project as a failure. Does that make sense? Yep. Scott Adams writes a lot about this really well. Tim applied this framework when deciding to whether he should start the podcast or not. He was able to see that the podcast would make him better at interviewing and asking questions, which is an important skill in general. And even the philosopher Voltaire went to say, judge a man by his questions rather than his answers. Besides, Tim was a prolific book author at the time, so this skill would serve him well when interviewing people for new books. So as you go executing different projects over time and stacking up new skills with each new project, you become increasingly more unique because less people will be able to match your skill set. And as Naval Ravikant said, it's even better if you are genuinely interested in those projects because you will go deeper than other people and it will feel like play to you rather than work. Scott Adams argued that he was never the best at any particular skill, but he was the best at something in which he was able to apply many acquired skills. He was able to combine his average knowledge in design, writing, comedy, and business skills to produce his most successful project, Dilbert. So the most deterministic and less competitive way to get rich is to keep learning skills and finding ways to combine them so that you can be the best at what you do, as Robert Greene wrote on his book Mastery. The future belongs to those who learn more skills and combine them in creative ways. 
I want to also mention that when I'm doing things and learning new skills, I try not to fixate too much on the particular relevance of those skills to my future self. Because as Steve Jobs said, it's impossible to connect the dots looking forward. We can only connect them looking backwards. So just have faith that somehow those new skills will eventually connect and become useful to my future self. And if you want to prepare yourself and learn skills faster, I recommend you to check out Shortform. Shortform creates super insightful study guides from hundreds of nonfiction books, and it has helped me to discover and learn ideas much faster. The cost is equivalent to the price of one book a month, and you can use my affiliate link shortform.com slash picking nuggets to get a five day free trial and a 20% discount on the annual subscription. You can also find the link in the description below.